Hey everybody and welcome back to the Inside EVs channel where today we are in beautiful Moab, Utah at the Easter Jeep Safari. Today we are playing around with all of the brand's new concept vehicles, including this one. It's been the star of the show the entire week. This is Magneto 2.0, so the second iteration of Jeep's all-electric Wrangler, still of course in concept form. So in this Inside EVs first drive video, we are of course going to drive Magneto 2.0 take it on a brief driving loop and answer the question, what's it like to drive a Wrangler under all electric power uh, and especially still in this early prototype phase? So let's get into it. So joining us for a walk around before we go for a drive is the head of the Jeep brand in North America, Jim Morrison. Thank you uh, for bringing us out here and we're excited to talk about this vehicle with you. Oh, this is the natural environment for, uh, for Jeep. And what a better place to uh, showcase our next generation or our second prototype of Magneto, the all-electric Wrangler uh, right here in Moab. So this brand is getting closer and closer to electrification. It's of course already in 4xe, you're already starting to play around with that. This car behind us is not necessarily closer to production, but it's sort of bridging the gap between a traditional Wrangler and what's to come in the future. Is that fair? Yeah, for sure. And we're really happy to be off to a good start with our 4xe. Wrangler is the number one selling plug-in in America for all of last year, even though we started kind of mid-year, and starting this year in 2022 is the number one selling uh, plug-in electric. So we're already you know, well into that space, but really taking it to the next level with all electric and Wrangler in a way that it has to be Jeep first. It's really cool when you see these electric Jeeps driving around in complete quiet, but delivering all the four x four performance that our customers demand because it's got Jeep on it. So Magneto 2.0, you know, with the EVs, we get to talk about range and, and all that sort of stuff, but this is more about performance and it's a working concept it is. for what you could do with the production Wrangler. Talk us through some of the specs and we'll go through the highlights. Well, the biggest thing about 2.0, because we did yeah. this last year <laughs> with, um, basically it was a matching the uh, the Wrangler V6 type of performance. So, yeah, so just under 300 three horsepower. Inch tires, so you know, stock axles, but you know, our customers love to modify and go to more performance. So modifications on 2.0, as you can see, 40 inch tires, we got um, Dana 60s in the front, Dana 80s in the Huge back. Huge axle Because it's it. got to manage 850 pound feet of torque, right? So that's the other thing our customers like to do is to climb walls and climb crazy cliffs around here. So we've got all of that uh, capability and we can manage it a little bit better 625 horsepower, over 800 pound feet. You have a single motor on this thing. It's yes. not a dual motor setup, a single motor on the front axle, and the battery cells are kind of spread throughout the vehicle for weight distribution as of now, is that right? Yes, there's uh, 800 uh, total, but uh, the two 400s in series, and it uh, puts all that together so you can deliver uh, all that horsepower and torque in a way that uh, only a Jeep can. And talk to us about, you equated it to a shot of nitrous oxide. It'll it run is. at its peak amperage for up to 10 seconds. Is yes. that correct? The only thing that really um, limits a Wrangler in its, uh, in its approach, and is because it's got great approach angles, but in its climb is really the way the oil can move backwards sure. in the engine, right? So this thing doesn't have to worry about that. You can climb a wall with this and we can't wait to. And while I have you here, you know, our Inside EVs audience might be becoming more familiar with the Jeep brand as they're driving more traditional electric vehicles. What excites you most about taking the brand, and specifically Wrangler, into an all-electric future? You know, I think the best thing is, it's the natural evolution of four-wheel drive capability. And over the years, you know, 81 years now of uh, four-wheel drive leadership, we've made some serious uh, transitions. And this is the next one for us that's completely natural for us. It's natural because it's a really good 4x4 and it's quiet and it's a connection with nature that is pure Jeep. And when it's natural, it's easy and customers are attracted to it. That's what we're seeing already with uh, 4xe Wrangler. Yeah. And that's what we'll do and make sure that we do right for all the next electric vehicles because that connection to nature and four wheel drive capability is what it's all about. So this drive is not going to be talking about range, charging speeds, things like that, but it is going to be about, you know, low speed rock crawling, getting to take this and putting it in an atmosphere where it's going to do well in the future. So let's take it for a drive. Let's just go through the, the startup process because this is obviously very foreign to a lot of EV fans. Yes. 
Um, it is a little different for for normal, and it's part of it. It's, it's how we're testing the different ranges. So you don't really expect to go to market with a clutch yeah. uh, and an EV because, as you know, most EVs only have one. I think there's even you know, a couple of examples that two have speed, two speeds. Two speeds, one speed. Yeah. Right? So um, we love doing two speeds. Obviously, we have a two speed transfer case. Uh, but what, really the interesting thing here is you, all you need to, need to do is to kind of select your range uh, and you can you know start it out in in, uh, in second in high so clutch in the clutch on. You, here's the thing is the interesting thing is you don't even need to put the clutch in the clutch just needs to uh, help you select the gear so put the clutch in and and put it in uh, put it in second okay so um, starting the car your, in second now you can take your put off and now you don't have to use the clutch to that's actually, already just, trippy yeah it is it's it, for those that actually you know, drive manuals. Not how many of us left, right? Uh, you know, but that's uh, that's the thing is that's just you. So now it's just you drive it like a normal EV. And for what it's worth, you guys, you know, in Concept Farm in Michigan, anybody doubting that a manual can work with an EV and that it could still be fun to use, you made it happen. You know, in concept form, not even in production form. It's yes, pretty cool. It could do. Yep. And then it's a true Rubicon. Yeah. So you know, you can turn the sway bars off. You know, give us a little more articulation. Uh, this thing's riding on 40s, so 40s. you can basically point it uh, at any rock you want, and uh, and away you go. But I mean, it uh, and now it just kind of drives like a uh, a regular, you know, Wrangler in um, in four wheel drive. So you know, these things are crazy. So the the crawling power is obviously the biggest uh, benefit to an EV Wrangler. Is that the low speed stuff? You know, you put out. 625 horsepower and immediately everybody's like drag race you know punch in a straight yes. line but this is really where an ev wrangler would do best one of the things the jeep does incredibly well is uh the plug of the 4 by e is the regen right so the grand cherokee's just left here for a drive they're going to go up to 8,000 feet right and they're going to come back and they're going to come back with almost the same amount of battery that they left but not plugged in so right? let's so change it up a little bit toss so it into low range okay so we're in neutral, we go down into a full four low. You same know, transfer case that's in It is, Rubicon, the same four right? to one transfer case. So this, now we're in four low. This one has a little bit of a finicky touch to it. It should, okay, um, there we go. And, now we're locked And in. then um, clutch in. Clutch in. And we're in first. first. Now clutch out. Now you just actually one foot driving again. Um, but this is where it's crazy. You've got, you know, 850 pound feet of torque now. And if you want, just go straight down there. You're actually gonna have to use your oh yeah, it uh, does a regen foot to actually drive down. Right? So that's what's neat. There is the regen is happening so much so that you actually have to give it a little bit of throttle, throttle to go down, even to go down a small rock shelf like that. Exactly. And you were saying that that'll you know kind of be the case taking this on longer drives too, where if you're at a downward slope of any kind and you're in full regen, you're gonna to have to use the throttle because the regen is enough to bring the car to a full stop. Exactly. Very, yeah. very cool. So in low range too, you're getting a lot more torque and there's there's no dip you in it at all. You can just feel it, can't you? Yeah. It's, it's got so much torque. You really think you can climb up that uh, that wall over there. It's we'll got start so much power. heading back before they think that I stole this and drove it back home. But So now there's no need to shift into uh, another gear while we're still in low range, is that right? Oh, you can let it run all the time in, in low if you want, uh, or you can uh, switch it over and uh, and go to high. If you want, we can put it in the, so put it on the that. brake. Okay, so we go out, back into neutral. Yep. And then that'll take us out of four low. Yep, and then just leave it in four high. In four there high. you go. Perfect. Yep. And it's reconnecting the sway bar too. So we go clutch in still. Yeah. You want to disconnect the sway bar? Getting too old for connected sway bars <laughs> when you can disconnect them. So clutch rides. out, car doesn't stall. That is something I'm never going to get used to, but still very cool nonetheless. It's very much a Frankenstein car, but in the coolest of ways. And the fact that you're still letting people drive it is is great because this isn't going to be just like uh, a production EV Wrangler. There's going to be a lot that's different, obviously starting from the manual yes. and going from there. Well, the best thing about it and what we're doing with, you know, all of these um, concepts out here is um, we have a little bit of a different approach, you know, to, um, to the way we get our, our research back from our customers. We put operating, um, you know, prototypes and concepts in our in our journalist's hands and we get customer feedback from this stuff and that's what really drives the brand is 
we have 20,000 of our best Wrangler customers here in Moab, and you know they're really what drive our brand, and we want them to tell us what they're looking for in um, you know in this uh, all electric Wrangler. So before we finish here, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from 4xE that you will apply to a full electric Wrangler? I think one of the biggest things that we've learned is the overall acceptance of this technology for Jeep. You know, there are some people questioning it, but what's really interesting is you put a, the best performance in front of any Jeep enthusiast and they'll pick it. Right. And electric is that right now. It's the next generation of the best performance for Jeep four-wheel drive capability and our uh, enthusiasts are all over it. Well, thank you for letting us drive and play around with your concept vehicle today. Uh, I speak on, I think, on behalf of everybody watching this, we're excited to see this brand get closer and closer to full electrification. And even this weirdo concept is a very cool representation of that. Yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Thanks.